Jeez, who would have thought boiling a bit of water would take 2.7 kilowatts? So we're literally using solar power and a little bit of battery to boil our kettle. Where did my filter go? So. Yes, that smells lovely. That's well boiled. I think the switch is a bit hesitant there. Let's give it a try. Jesus, that's definitely hot, all right. How are we doing? I'm Martin from Gardens for Life and Bird on Homestead. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I boil this kettle completely off grid out the back here in our back garden using our solar power system. We've got the solar panels, the batteries and the Vivor solar inverter. Stay tuned. If you haven't seen the first part yet and if you want to know how to set it all up, well watch the first part. And in the third part of this series, which we'll probably put out next week, uh, we're going to actually try and run the whole house off this system. What do you think Levi? You got a bat here? What do you think, Nina? You're a good girl. The dogs are roasting. It's a hot day out here. In the garden. You might be thinking, Jez, what's he at now? Sure, this is not about gardening. Well, I'm gonna post this video up on our Gardens for Life channel and on our Birdland Homesteading channel as well. Having a little setup like this is actually tremendously useful, not just to power your house or to save money or to have a backup, but also even for having a bit of power in a place where you can't have power. For example, in a greenhouse somewhere at an allotment even. You could put in a smaller system and it's handy to have a socket just in case you want to use uh, 230 volt appliances. For example, pumps or lights or tools or anything that's gardening related. So it could come in fierce handy and I'm gonna put in a smaller system into our greenhouse. So subscribe to not miss the videos and I'll show you how useful it can be. If you wanna get any of the products that are featured in this video, take a look at the links in the description box. Use our discount code BIRDLAND for 5% off anything Vivor. All right, so instead of an extension lead, I have a proper socket and a good thick cable as well. I think this is two and a half millimeters square, so it can take at least 20 amps anyway. For those of you who've seen the last video, you'll know that amps multiplied by volts is watts. So we can do 230 volts multiplied by 20 amps, which is roughly about 4,600 watts. So we'll make sure we don't go near the limit, obviously. Well, this is a standard socket for the house, so we'll see how it goes. We're out here anyway, and it'll be safe enough. So into AC out. Brown is live, blue is neutral, in case you didn't know that. All right, so it's really important to push the cable in while you're screwing it closed, tightening it. Okay, so a quick test, yeah, that's safe enough. We even got a lovely bit of sun, so we probably won't even have to use actually our battery power, but we'll see how the unit handles it now. And safety first, we'll just put the cover on. Okay, let's turn the unit on. No amps, draw, and no watts at the moment. All right, we're all wired up. First things first, let's make a coffee. I have to admit to you, I haven't used an electric kettle for years because we have a gas cooker. So I'll have to check if this kettle is actually still working. We'll see, we'll find out in a minute. And we got our fancy coffee grinder here. Did you load in watts there? Let's see how much the coffee grinder actually uses. Only 100 watts. All right, let's turn on the kettle, see what happens. 2.7 kilowatts. And see how much that is coming from the solar panels at the moment. 1.76. I didn't know this kettle was three kilowatts or close to it. I thought it was two kilowatts, but sure, it's doing well anyway. So we're literally using solar power and a little bit of battery to boil our kettle. So we used to use electric appliances and now we use gas appliances wherever we can anyway at least the cooker and the kettle anyway and we save a lot of money on electricity every month but now that we can actually boil the kettle practically for free 
using solar energy, well that makes it an awful lot cheaper than having to buy gas at all. Of course it's always good to have a backup, but hey I think we'll be using an electric cooker next. Although they're not as good as a gas cooker though. Maybe induction comes close, I don't know. You tell me in the comments. Just to prove it to you, we have no extension lead plugged in here or anything like that. It's all running off the solar inverter, the batteries and the solar panels. So let's try this machine here. So this machine here is an original skill saw. It's meant to use 1400 watts. It says it there somewhere. Let's see. See how many watts it uses. Yep, like all electric motors, hang on. Like all electric motors, it uses a good bit more at the very start, just to get it going. If you were to run a smaller system, you could even get the three and a half kilowatt inverter off Vivor and two batteries and no solar panel. You can charge those batteries at home. So you could just run the inverter off the batteries and not bother with a solar panel on top of your van. You'd always have a bit of power with you, whether it's a camper van or a work van, you could use tools or you could even boil a kettle, for example. All right, folks, final test. We're going to run this electric heater, which is two kilowatts, probably actually uses less than the kettle. So let's see how much it uses on its own. I'm already roasting out here, so I don't really need the electric heater now. Now let's see, 1.79 kilowatts. So let me just run the gill saw at the same time. Nice. And there you have it, three kilowatts. To use more than three kilowatts safely, I think I'll wire in a ticker cable. We will get to that in the third episode when we take it to the limit and we're gonna run our whole house off the solar inverter for 24 hours. And we're gonna run the washing machine as well just to see how it goes. Uh, one last thing I wanna check is exactly how much it'll actually take from the solar panels as opposed to the battery. PV. Look at that, 1.8 kilowatts. That's with the heater on its own. So it's taken all of that power from the heater. So I wasn't quite sure how it works when the sun is out and how much of the electricity is actually gonna come from the panels as opposed to the battery. It seems like most of it is coming from the panels. It's trying to take as much of it from there as it can without having to use the battery. So that's great. So when there's no load on the system or when there's no electricity being used, by the solar inverter, it's just going to dump any excess electricity into the batteries until they're full. And you have that for the evening time when the sun goes down or for a dull day. Just to let you know, I did test the system with the sun actually going down and when the sun disappears behind trees, it still produces about one third of the electricity, somewhere around 900 watts or 1000 watts out of 3.2 kilowatts. I haven't tested the system on a dull day yet, but we'll get to it in the third video. Please stay tuned and subscribe if you haven't done so yet to stay in touch. And thank you for watching the video. If you'd like to avail of any of the products featured in this video, check the links below and use our discount code BIRDLAND for 5% off anything Vivor. Thank you so much and thank you again Vivor for supporting us. See you later. Bye bye. And please leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you so much.